Okay, so here's a quick demonstration on how to leverage the .NET connector within AnyPoint Studio. Um, a good place to kind of start is the documentation within MuleSoft. So if you go to docs.mulesoft.com and you search for .NET, um, there's some great information there in terms of you know how to leverage the connector, how to set it up. Um, but let me go ahead and walk you guys through a quick example. Um, I'm going to switch over to my Windows environment here. There are some limitations for the .NET connector. Um, you can't leverage the .NET connector within Cloud Hub, so you do need to deploy your applications that leverage the .NET connector within a Windows environment because of its dependency on the .NET framework. But um, setting that aside, let's go ahead and look at how to set up the .NET connector. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and leverage a project that I've built out, uh, a sample DLL project that I've set up within Visual Studio. Um, I just have a simple method here where I'm passing in two parameters. It's going to add that up and then return that value back to the user. Okay. So with this project, let's go ahead and build it. Uh, once we build it, it's going to generate a DLL and we're going to go and see where that is. So if we come back into my project folder here and go into that project, it'll be under the bin folder. Okay. Okay. So switching back over to studio, let's go ahead and start from scratch and build a sample project here. Let's just call it, um, uh, dot net. Oh, actually uh, set the project name here called simple dot net example. Okay. We'll leave everything default. We're running this on 4.1.3. It's going to add this project to my default location. Let's go ahead and click on finish and it's gonna give me a blank canvas. So to kick off this DLL, we're just gonna go ahead and add a listener in here that's gonna listen for a request from a browser, pass in hard-coded values for the math operation, and then return those values back, okay? So we'll go ahead and drop in an HTTP listener, and we'll configure this to listen on port 8081, and it's just gonna be on HTTP protocol. We'll click on okay. For the path, let's just call it uh, forward slash math and save that and that's configured now and then over here on the right we want to go ahead and add in the module for .NET so if you haven't added it in the past you're gonna have to go ahead and search an exchange and then search for .NET and there's the connector here we're gonna go ahead and add that to the selected module and click on finish and that'll go ahead and add it to the project. So for the .NET connector, uh, it's not like some of our connectors were with multiple operations. There's only one operation for the .NET connector and that's execute. So we're gonna click on execute. We're gonna drag that into the flow, into the process side. And you can see that uh, it shows the operations there. So for the execute operation, what we first need to do is set up the configuration. So uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and grab the DLL from that folder. And usually I grab the PDB file as well, but I'll go ahead and copy those files. And then over here in the project, we can go ahead and right click and paste that directly into the source main resources folder. So we do need that within the source main resources folder. Uh, there are settings where you can leave the DL where it sits, but uh, you know you can read through the documentation on a little more detail around that. So back in the component for execute, let's go ahead and click on the plus sign here to add the configuration. So here are the couple of settings we need to do in here. So for the connection, we need to make sure that we point it to the resource. That's because the DLL is sitting within the resource folder. There's a couple other connection operations here. Uh, external is that you leave the resource file or the DLL file where it sits. Um, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and leave it in the source main resource folder. Um, for the scope, we're gonna set this to be a singleton, um, just so for every request, it's gonna go ahead and pass in data to a new, uh, instantiate a new DLL, right? Every single time transient, we'll keep it alive and um, keep that running between requests, but we'll keep it singleton now and keep everything default uh, for the, 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 the remaining properties here in the general tab. And then in the assembly tab, let's go ahead and uh, select the DLL. So we're gonna, it's gonna open up into the project folder we're gonna to go to main source, main resources, and point it directly at that DLL project, okay? So once it's, that's set up, let's go ahead and click on test connection. It's gonna go ahead and say test successful. Once it actually sets that up, we'll click on okay, and okay here, and that's set up. 
So the next thing we need to do is configure the, the type and the method. So you can see the type automatically gets set up for that specific project. And then for the method, it's gonna show all the available methods that are available for that specific DLL. In this case, we wanna go ahead and select the add uh, method. So once that's selected, you can see over here on the right under the data sense, it's gonna pull back an understanding of the you know, metadata that needs to be passed in. And then in the output side, you can also see that it returns back the value of you know, that operation, which is uh, a great benefit of the connector. So we'll go ahead and save that configuration. And then next we wanna go ahead and uh, transform the data that's going in. And we also want to drop in a transform message on the other side of the execute. So for the transform method side, we can go ahead and hard code these numbers in here. We'll say that the first value here is three and the second value over here is seven, right? And for the transform message, the data coming out, let's go ahead and just spit out that payload. Oops. And we will go ahead and set the application, or the output for this to just be JSON and we'll click on save. And that should hopefully be it. Let's go ahead and test this out now. Uh, we'll right click on the canvas and run the project. And we'll save it. And it's gonna go ahead and build the project now. And while it's building, let's go ahead and open up a browser. Oops, let me go ahead and close a uh, Visual Studio in the background here. File, exit. Okay, so hopefully there's enough memory for uh, Studio to, to spin up here. Okay, so it's close to being done now. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome now. I'm gonna minimize this window here. Okay, so it's deployed. Let's go ahead and navigate to that endpoint. And I think it was uh, math, right? And what's happening in the background is it's gonna go ahead and pass those values, hard-coded values, and then spit out the value. So as you can see, pretty straightforward. The, the .NET connector uh, makes it easy for you to call it a DLL, uh, either one that's included within your project or uh, one that's sitting somewhere else um, that you want to reference within your project, but uh, it provides that simple execute operation and then allows you to easily map the data in terms of what data needs, needs, needs to be passed into that um, specific method, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I am here to help, and hope you have a good day.